Let's begin in France with League uh, Canadian Jonathan David and his side Lil taking on the Giants PSG. Good battle going on for top spot in that division. Lil in their history, they've won a total of three titles. The last one coming in 2010, 2011 season, whereas PSG has won seven of the last eight. That's not an easy giant to knock off. But what do you know? Lil walk away with the one nil victory. Who supplied the goal? That would be the Canadian, Jonathan David. So let me ask you this, Ollie. When we're talking about Canadians scoring big goals in Europe, was that the biggest? Um, I think it has the potential to be, at least on the men's side. We, you know, you can throw a couple of caveats in there. We, we don't know for sure how important it will be because Lil obviously still have work to do here. And, and I think also, you know, nowadays when we can watch every single game and every single moment in Jonathan David's career, we're probably more exposed to these kinds of moments than we were for, you know, De Guzman and, and Radzinski and players like that in, in years gone by. But what, whatever it is, it's a massive moment for a player. And, and I think we should remind ourselves a player that has been on a staggering rise. You know, he only turned 21 years old in January. Um, it's only three years since he even came over to Europe playing youth football in Ottawa, um, not in a professional environment. And now he's on the same pitch as Mbappe and Neymar and PSG and, and scoring a winning goal in, in a potentially title deciding match in one of Europe's top five leagues. Um, and, and it's becoming less and less of a surprise, right? You know, we can talk about the, the slow start that Jonathan David had, but in 2021, He's got eight goals in 14 games in Liga, and he's the joint top scorer the, the, this calendar year in the division. So he, he's a player who obviously is playing fantastically well right now. Unfortunately, that's going to come to a bit of a halt here because of his injury. Um, but he's certainly extinguishing the doubts that maybe we had in the first couple of months of the season when he got off to that slow start. Yeah, pure elation scoring in the 20th minute. But yes, there was a nasty tackle there. So he didn't even make it through the first 45, being subbed out in the 35th minute. And the club releasing on their Twitter account that he did undergo, again, a little bit more evaluation. And he did, in fact, um, suffer a ruptured lateral ligament to the right angle, ankle. Excuse me, He'll be out for several weeks. So, Gareth, do you think uh, Lil can hold on to that three-point lead now over PSG? And are you worried when it comes to him perhaps playing for Canada, as we know there are some big matches coming up in June. I'll address the prior before the latter. Um, I think Lil, even with Jonathan David, probably didn't don't feel or didn't feel all that secure with that narrow three-point lead with PSG with a much easier schedule coming home. Lil still plays Lyon. That's a big game coming up against a very good side as well. There's enough in the tank in terms of other players in the Lille team to kind of complement or, or, or step up while Jonathan David is out. And they're a team that's known more for their defensive organization, more so than their attack. So I think that they'll be okay. They'll be in the mix right to the end. I did not like this challenge by Idrissa Gay. Not one bit. And this is one of the things, when you let the play go, because Paredes made a, a committed a foul just before that, that the referee went back and cautioned the Argentine, the play was allowed to continue continue and then this happens it's just one of the negatives about the you know about, about the advantage rule what concerns me more is his status with the Canadian men's national team several weeks isn't two weeks Andy this probably goes between four and eight I'm guessing which takes us all the way up to the June World Cup qualifiers as if things haven't been complicated enough for the Canadian men's national team dealing with quarantines everything to do with COVID a tricky first couple rounds of World Cup qualifying as well now that seed of doubt is planted whether or not David will be at full strength and or ready to go I think we're hopeful it's a situation that we're going to monitor but the other wrinkle involved in this if Jonathan David David is potentially lining up a big summer move elsewhere. Will he or his club or whoever want him to be playing in this competition, if not fully fit in terms of World Cup qualifying? Again, a complex situation for the Canadian men's national team gets that much more complex. And that's not what you want to hear if you're a supporter of Canadian soccer. Yeah, when a team doesn't release numbers like two to four or six to eight weeks, we hang on every word. And we were having a good debate. Mm. Few weeks is different than several, several weeks. Man. So I think we're all kind of <laughs> anticipating that he's going to be out for quite some time. But Ollie, you just heard, you know, Gareth say maybe about a big move here. Do you think that if he doesn't get back in the lineup that we saw him possibly play his final game with Lil? 
Yeah, I think it's a lot more possible than people think. And, and this is becoming the storyline of the league on title race, right? Is you have this uh, probably the most wealthy, powerful, financially powerful team in, in world football in PSG against a little team that is in, has been in financial meltdown um, all season. And, and we know that, uh, you know, France is having financial issues generally right now. Um, they, they cut the seat last season short. Sure, obviously, the pandemic has hit them hard as it's hit everyone. They had their TV deal collapse, which was obviously bad news. Um, but Lille's, Lille's financial problems go deeper and they're much longer running and they precede the pandemic. And it's to do with the stadium, which is way too big for them and very expensive to run. Um, it's to do with wages I think they're paying. And despite the fact that they've established themselves as this incredible talent factory, selling players for tens of millions of euros um, every single summer, they are posting a loss every year, um, which is, is pretty incredible given the amount of talent that they are uh, managing to sell. So I, I think it's going to be expected that they're going to have to sell more players in the summer. Um, I think teams around Europe are going to know they're open for business. Uh, there's, there's players that could be sold that aren't Jonathan David. There's Jonathan Nakone, there's yeah. Renato Sanchez. There's a lot of talent on this team. Sven Botman is another one who's in high demand. So it's not a, a foregone conclusion that David will be the player they cash in on. But certainly, you know, as I mentioned before, being the top scorer in Ligue 1 and since the start of 2021, he is starting to look like um, the crown jewel, right? The, the most valuable player and the player who could potentially get the highest return. So I think it is definitely looking possible that uh, John, Jonathan David, at, at the very least, will be on the market and they'll be, they'll be listening to offers for him this summer. Gareth, do you think Jonathan David, though, has done enough to warrant a move to a bigger club and a bigger league? And do you think the pandemic can actually work in his favor in this? I think that he probably has just done enough. And it's also to do with his age, as Ali said. The player's just 21, right? And this is a trend that clubs want to buy younger and potentially cheaper players and bring them through. David won't come on a discount, but because of the pandemic, the finances across European football seem to be a little bit out of whack and are going to dictate what clubs can and cannot do this summer. It was interesting last weekend hearing Pep Guardiola say that the club can't afford to go out and buy a number nine like Erling Holland. Perhaps, you know, they go a tier below, which Jonathan David would fall into along with Alexander Isak and, uh, and, and uh, Naziri with Sevilla, who's done very well. There's a number of strikers in that secondary tier that would be considered behind the Hollands, the Mbappes, the Benzema's of the world that might come into play at a cheaper price. Even Kyle Lahren now is being linked to moves to clubs like Everton and West Ham. Finding that goal scorer is something that all clubs have. And, th you know, to Ollie's point, Botman, Sanchez, Ikone, a lot of good players for Lille who couldn't be made available potentially, but only one of them really plays up top in that coveted position, in, in, and that's Jonathan David, right? So he could be a serious fallback option for some of these bigger clubs that are looking to kind of manage their finances a little bit more cautiously this summer. Let's cause a little chaos right now, shall we? I'm gonna pose this question to you, Ollie. If Lil does in fact go on to win the title, and we're gonna look at this game and the weekend is, you know, a big turning point as well. And Jonathan David getting that goal. Can you make the case that Jonathan David's 2021 season is more impressive than Alfonso Davies' 2020 season? <laughs> uh, this is like asking a parent to choose who their favorite child is, I think. I, I, I really have no interest in diminishing either Easy. one of their accomplishments. <laughs> um, I, I think from a team level, possibly, right? Because Lil, you know, they're, they're not going to win titles as regularly as Bayern Munich are. Um, they're probably not even as likely to win league on as Bayern are to win the Champions League. I think that would be a more um, kind of out, of out of a normal status quo kind of achievement. So on that level, yes. I, I just think individually, when you look at the two players, Alfonso Davies going straight from the Vancouver Whitecaps to Bayern Munich, and then in, in not too short order, becoming a Bayern Munich starter. I, I think, forget Canada, forget, you know, I, I think that's an incredible achievement and an incred incredible story as an individual on, it, on any level. Um, so I'd have to give Davies the edge there with David just having a bit more of kind of a gradual progression uh, since he came to Europe in terms of the way he's grown. But who cares, to be honest? You know, two fantastic <laughs> uh, Canadian stories and, and two players doing unbelievably well. It's Davies and the Lille story with David is improbable. But let's be honest, let's get back to Ali's point. Choosing your favorite child, it's always the first. 
It's always the first child, Andy, because you've known that kid for the for the longer period of time. So don't kid yourselves, people out there. The first child, always the favorite.